So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Jocko and I work as a software engineer at PSC team. So, as many of you know, uh, the last few years have seen a huge generational shift in cryptography. We passed from specialized to general purpose cryptography. And this has brought exciting new opportunities for everyone to make it more practical. But this comes at a cost. The cost is that we should navigate lots of jargon and mathematics. And to get the big picture also for people that is experienced in the field, it's pretty hard, like navigating the protocols, primitives, languages, tooling, etc. So today we'll try to do something very difficult to give just an overview, but we will stay really high level general purpose uh, in order to understand what the building blocks of programmable cryptography can bring. And we will just focus on the programmable part instead of the cryptography, which is how things work under the hood, because we do not have much time. So um, yeah. Zero knowledge proof. So a zero knowledge proof make one party, the prover, able to prove uh, to another party, the verifier, that the statement is true without revealing any information beyond the mere fact of the statement's validity. So you can use this, for example, to prove your age that is above some sort of threshold without saying exactly what your age is. Um, secure multi-party computation uh, is a set of cryptographic protocols that let multiple parties collaborate together to compute a function providing their inputs, maintaining those inputs for all the computation private. This is useful for use cases like voting, where you have to like vote on something and you want to keep your vote private, and you do not want to trust on a, a third party to count the votes. Then we have FHE, fuel homomorphic encryption, set of cryptographic tools that enables you to do encrypted computations. What encrypted computation mean is that once decrypted, you get a plain text. And this plain text is the same as if it performed the computation on the decrypted data directly. This is ideal for scenarios like outsourcing computation, like running machine learning model without letting the model owner learn about your data. Um, each of this block is pretty powerful by its own, um, but they open up fascinating possibilities by combining them. In particular, um, uh, on like trying to solve their own like drawbacks. For example, ZKP can be seen as an efficient up specific MPC, but combining them, you can obtain a very fine like the MPC computation, like able to prove that the multi-party computation was performed correctly under some assumption in the key. So instead of just computing, you can also prove from input to output the computation, or you can outsource the computation. So you can rely on other people doing the computation for you. Like they can be like uh, more than one people. And this can enable complex cryptography also in resource constraint device because you're not computing by yourself. Uh, another combination MPC FHE, like one of the biggest challenges in FHE is managing the decryption keys. And there are two main approaches. The first one um, is with MPC distributing the key generation. So you have multiple parties and they can jointly and manage a single FHE key where no single party has the ownership of the key. And the multi-key FHE, everyone has a key and they should combine the key uh, to perform the secure computation. And on the other hand, since FHE is just addition multiplication of ciphertext, you can achieve sum of product um, the, of encrypted values, so you can build generic MPC. With ZKP and FHE, it's the most experimental and is basically trying to tackle two questions. The first one is, how can I trust that the encrypted value was correct under some assumptions, like is a correct BFE ciphertext, or how can I trust that the computation was done correctly? And all three blocks combined, um, is like you can combine them, it's technically feasible. We can add ZKE to make very verifiable MPC FHE combination. You can add T's, trusted execution environment, to do the ZKE and participate in the MPC FHE, but um, we are still need to take into consideration that many real world problems can be solved with just one vanilla block, like just ZKE or MPC. 
And defining resources, constraints, and unique needs of your problem can help you navigate all the space of the solutions and help you to make the right choice. Um, I'm running out of time, so thank you. <laughs> okay, we have three minutes Q&A. Raise your hand if you have a question. That's a little bit far. I'm going to oh. try. <laughs> That's why I outsourced to you. <laughs> Maybe I should give it to you. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, what are the most interesting use cases for every single one of the uh, technologies that you've seen? Um, like Ziki, MPC, FHE, or the combination? Uh, I mean, is there a combination application yet? Um, yeah, there are some not applications that, they, like, I cannot say that they are production ready. There are some explorations and research. Uh, so you have mainly like tooling that can help you to distribute the key of FHE uh, in MPC, or you have like some sort of initial research in verifiable FHE, like proving that your ciphertext is encrypted correctly. So there's still lots going on. And as I said, it's hard to keep up with everything. So maybe I'm not aware of other stuff. But in general, yeah, I think the most exciting thing is trying to make like advancement in the FHE verifiability because this can be really a breakthrough. And uh, I don't know if I can make another question, but uh, is there any framework yet for uh, fully homomorphic encryption with contracts, like for mainnet in Solidity? Um, when you speak about mainnet in Solidity, uh, I think that FHE is mainly off-chain stuff. There are some teams that are working on on-chain FHE as well. Um, but yeah, you can find like the state of the art in the tooling and developer experience is not like as the ZK one right now. So there's still lots of work to do in libraries, tooling, and frameworks. Right now there are good libraries, good frameworks, but mainly for experimental research more than going to production. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we have time for one more question. Thank you for, Thank you for the presentation. Yeah. Is FHE general purpose? Can we use it for, every, for all uh, computation, all kinds of computation? Um, so I'm not 100% sure, but FHE is mostly additions and multiplication, so you can maybe emulate everything with those operations. And so, yeah, you can have some sort of general purpose FHE going on. But um, all the nuances about like the constraints on how efficient it is or how it can be applied on small devices or other stuff, it still depends on what kind of backend you are going to use. Yeah. I think okay. we have five seconds. Let's give a big hand to Jacobo. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Ros